What if I told you SpaceX already has a spacecraft that could take astronauts to the moon, without Starship, and without NASA's massive Artemis architecture? It's a vehicle we've seen fly for years, the Crew Dragon. Originally built to ferry astronauts to low Earth orbit, some experts believe it could be upgraded for lunar missions, cutting out the complexity of Orion, Gateway, and even the need for Starship. And while Starship still dominates the headlines, the question is, could Dragon be the secret, simpler path to landing humans back on the moon? In today's TechMap episode, we'll explore exactly how that could happen. It's no accident that NASA's SLS rocket and Orion spacecraft are seen as iconic. Their status comes from their historical importance, cutting-edge technology and the central role they play in NASA's current vision for space exploration. They mark humanity's return to the moon and a stepping stone to Mars, standing as NASA's most powerful rocket and its most advanced crewed spacecraft for deep space. These vehicles also carry forward NASA's legacy by building on proven technology. Orion, built by Lockheed Martin, began as the crew exploration vehicle under the Constellation program. The SLS rocket reuses elements from Constellation's Ares rockets and the Space Shuttle, such as the RS-25 shuttle engines and solid rocket boosters. But unlike SpaceX's innovations, these boosters aren't reusable. This reflects NASA's long-standing practice of adapting existing technology and expertise to keep costs in check, speed up development, and reduce risks instead of creating everything brand new. However, the approach shows a clear disadvantage. Even though we now have reusable rockets, NASA is still holding on to costly, expendable systems like the SLS. And the same issues that doomed Constellation, runaway costs, and constant technical delays are now haunting Artemis. This has U.S. policymakers and NASA leaders on edge worried that China could leap ahead in the race to the moon and claim leadership in space. China's rapid progress in space exploration has turned this into a geopolitical competition, one that makes Artemis's success more urgent than ever. But with mounting costs and setbacks, there's a real fear the U.S. could lose its edge. That's why there's growing pressure to move away from outdated government-built rockets and start leaning more on commercial systems that are cheaper and more advanced, like SpaceX's Starship, Blue Origin's New Glenn, or even Dragon. NASA handed SpaceX the contract that led to the Dragon crewed spacecraft back in 2014. More than 10 years later, it's still ferrying astronauts into orbit. What SpaceX has shown is that a private company, when focused and well-led, can achieve what once took entire governments and do it faster and cheaper. On top of that, their Falcon rockets are reusable, a concept many once dismissed as impossible. Beyond that, SpaceX has rolled out different versions of Dragon for different missions, even deep space. There's the U.S. deorbit vehicle, designed to safely bring down the space station. Dragon XL, set to resupply NASA's planned Lunar Gateway. And even the Red Dragon Mars concept, which was ultimately scrapped, but showed how ambitious the program could be. All of this underscores just how versatile the Dragon spacecraft really is. Which brings us to the big question. Could Dragon play a key role in moon missions? Maybe even step in for the struggling Orion? According to Dr. Robert Zubrin, founder of the Mars Society and president of Pioneer Astronautics. Dragon is not just cheaper than Orion. It is much better because it is much lighter. The Dragon has a mass of 9.5 tons, compared to Orion's 26.5 tons. Orion could have been designed lighter, but NASA has received so many conflicting directives from successive administrations. Weighing only 20% more than the Apollo capsule, it has 50% more internal space, making it more than large enough. Not only that, we wouldn't need to wait or pay for an SLS to get it there. There are several ideas for adapting Dragon to lunar missions. Dr. Robert Zubrin, 
president of Pioneer Astronautics and rocket scientist Homer Hickam, outlined one intriguing option in the Washington Post. Send the SpaceX Dragon to the moon. Instead of depending on NASA's SLS rocket and Orion capsule, they suggested using SpaceX's Falcon Heavy to launch a modified Crew Dragon along with a lunar lander into orbit around the moon. In this concept, dubbed Gray Dragon, astronauts would transfer from Crew Dragon to the lander, descend to the surface, complete their mission, and then return to Crew Dragon for the journey back to Earth. Another concept pairs Dragon with Starship HLS as an orbital transport system. The idea here is that Crew Dragon would handle trips between Earth and Low Earth Orbit LEO. From there, an orbital transfer vehicle, OTV, would ferry the astronauts to a near-rectilinear halo orbit, NRO, around the moon and back. Instead of building a brand new OTV, this plan would repurpose existing technology, specifically a variant of SpaceX's Starship HLS. In this role, Starship wouldn't land on the moon, but would function as a space tug, shuttling crews between Earth orbit and lunar orbit. One of the big challenges with using Dragon for lunar missions is figuring out what happens while it waits in low Earth orbit. The spacecraft would need to stay parked there for several days until the crew comes back from the moon. There are a couple of ways around this. One option is to fly two Dragons, one to bring the astronauts up to orbit and another to bring them back down. It's doable with the hardware SpaceX already has, but it would drive up costs. The other option is to modify Dragon itself so it can handle longer, uncrewed stretches in space. That would let the same capsule sit in orbit and wait. But making those changes to a human-rated spacecraft could add delays and complications to the program's timeline. A third option would be to launch another Starship, an HLS variant reimagined as a Crew Loitering Depot, or CLD. In this setup, Dragon docks with the CLD in low Earth orbit, and the depot supplies power, thermal control, and life support, while Dragon remains inactive. Even the priciest option of flying two crew Dragons would almost certainly cost less and involve fewer complications than sticking with the SLS and Orion systems. There's also a more streamlined approach, using Starship for the entire journey beyond low Earth orbit. Here's how it would work. Astronauts launch on Crew Dragon to reach LEO. Once there, they transfer into the Starship HLS. Starship then heads directly to the lunar surface, skipping the Artemis plan that requires docking with a station or rendezvous in lunar orbit. After completing the surface mission, Starship maneuvers into a relatively low lunar orbit. This would cut down the number of refueling flights needed in space and free up other starships for practical work, like launching Starlink satellites or hauling cargo. In lunar orbit, Starship docks with a return vehicle. A modified Crew Dragon launched separately on a Falcon Heavy rocket. Now Falcon Heavy isn't certified to fly humans, but that's not an issue here. This Dragon would launch uncrewed, without a launch abort system or full human rating requirements. Falcon Heavy has the power to push Dragon into a translunar orbit, while Dragon's own propulsion, using its Super Draco engines, could handle the burns to enter lunar orbit, dock with Starship, and then perform the burn to head back to Earth. And since Dragon only needs to support two astronauts for a few days, its life support systems are already capable of the job. On paper, the idea looked clever and cost-effective. But in reality, transforming Crew Dragon into a deep space vehicle is no easy task. So what exactly would it take to make Dragon Moon ready? For starters, Orion is built with advanced radiation shielding that protects astronauts from cosmic rays and solar particle events once they leave Earth's magnetic shield, a critical feature for deep space missions. Crew Dragon doesn't have this level of protection. To fix that, engineers would need to add specialized materials like polyethylene or multifunctional composites to block high-energy particles. 
but that extra shielding would add weight which could impact performance and payload capacity. While NASA is studying better materials for radiation protection, integrating them into Dragon would be a massive engineering challenge. Then there's life support. Orion's environmental control and life support system can sustain crews for weeks by recycling oxygen and water, regulating temperature, and scrubbing CO2. Crew Dragon, however, is only designed for missions of a few days to about a week in low Earth orbit. To handle Artemis-style missions, it would need larger consumable storage, upgraded recycling systems, and a stronger habitat environment for the longer transits and lunar orbit operations. That said, these challenges become less of a concern if Dragon is only used as a return vehicle under the concept where Starship handles everything beyond LEO. In that scenario, Dragon's life support would only need to support two astronauts for a few days in lunar orbit, well within its current capabilities. When you compare Dragon to Orion, another difference becomes clear. Orion's European service module packs the engines needed for translunar injection and lunar orbit insertion. Dragon, on the other hand, depends on its Falcon rocket for launch and has only small Draco thrusters, good enough for minor maneuvers but not for the complex navigation of deep space. That means it would need extra propulsion modules or rely on a heavy lift system like Falcon Heavy with additional stages. Then there's re-entry. Orion's heat shield is built for the punishing speeds of nearly 24,000 miles per hour coming back from the moon. Dragon's Pika X shield was originally designed with lunar and even Mars returns in mind, but today it's optimized for Earth orbit. It's strong but might need reinforcement and, importantly, formal certification before handling a lunar return. Size is another factor. Orion can carry four astronauts and all the supplies for weeks in deep space. The Dragon is smaller, limiting crew size and storage without requiring a major redesign. And finally, docking. Orion was designed from the ground up to connect with the lunar gateway and lunar landers. Dragon was built for the ISS. To fit into Artemis, it would need modifications to dock with gateway, connect with landers, and fully integrate into the mission's architecture. Last but not least, let's skip Crew Dragon, because SpaceX itself already has. The company has moved away from adapting Dragon for deep space, canceling plans for thruster landings and instead putting all its weight behind Starship as the main vehicle for lunar and interplanetary travel. Starship is built to haul up to 100 tons to the moon, compared to Dragon's modest one-ton capacity. But SpaceX is already teasing what comes after, Starship version 4. While details are still partly speculative, here's what we know. Version 4 will carry 42 engines in total, including three new Raptors optimized for vacuum. It will double payload capacity to 200 tons and grow even taller, up by nearly 9 meters. The booster itself will stretch to 81 meters, so tall that SpaceX needs a brand new assembly bay since the current mega bay maxes out at 71 meters and version 3 already pushed it to its limit. This redesign will push liftoff thrust to a staggering 10,000 tons. In Musk's words, this is the super heavy lift monster Starship was always meant to be. And it's likely that version 4 will be the first truly human-rated Starship.